What is up everybody? How are you doing? In Pokemon, there are fossils of long extinct Pokemon that can be found in the game. Through the power of technology, these fossils can be brought to life, letting you train these Pokemon. While this process is amazing and gives some of my favorite types of Pokemon, I've noticed that almost every single fossil Pokemon has the rock type. Now why is that? My guess is that the process of bringing these Pokemon back is not perfect, with some of the Pokemon's DNA being fused with the fossil, leaving it with the rock type after being reborn. However, that begs the question, what type were these Pokemon before they went extinct? That is what I want to talk about in this video. With Generation 4 rumored to be coming out soon, this could be an interesting idea for Game Freak to tackle, given the theming of time and space in those games. In this video, I will give you my thoughts on what I think these Pokemon's true typing is, using their real-life counterparts, design, and other evidence to come to those conclusions. Be prepared for some mispronunciations in this video, there's a whole lot of Latin in here. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing for more fun content in the future. Now with all that out of the way, let's get started. Almanite, Water Type. Amastar, Water Poison. Alright, so this one's a little tough for me to nail down according to the rules I gave myself. The Almanite line is based off of Anemonia, an extinct marine mollusk. The exact one Almanite looks like seems to be the ones that were the early octopods and squids. Since it's a descendant of the mollusk, that's the way I took Omastar itself, given its sharp beak resembles the beak found on octopods. Surprisingly enough, most of these things are incredibly venomous, despite their looks. Due to the fact that some of the sea snails and octopus have enough venom to take out a human, I'm thinking Omastar is a water poison type. Almanite doesn't have the same beak that Omastar has, so I'm saying it's closer to the Onomonia side of things, and is a pure water type because of that. Kabuto and Kabutops, water bug type. Compared to the Almanite line, the Kabuto line is a bit easier. Both Kabuto and Kabutops are partly based off of trilobites, ancient anthropods that lived on the ocean floor. This explains the water typing pretty well. Given the fact that trilobites are arthropods, the same family as butterflies, scorpions, and centipedes, makes the bug type a pretty good fit. As if that wasn't enough to justify it, Genesect also helped confirm this. Team Plasma used an unnamed fossil as the base of Genesect to create the strongest Pokemon ever. Genesect and Kabutops share a little bit of the same looks, so many people argue that Kabutops was the base fossil used. Genesect's typing is Bug Steel, then that makes sense as the Bug is the base Pokemon Kabutops, and the Steel is the modifications the armor made to it. Aerodactyl, Flying Dragon type. Aerodactyl's real second type is half based off of real information, and half on, come on, it straight up looks like a dragon. Aerodactyl is based off a of real life pterodactyl, a winged lizard that I just found out isn't a real dinosaur. My entire life has been a lie to this point. Anyway, pterodactyls are known as winged dragons in Japan, paired with the fact that Aerodactyl has a raven-like design, makes it the perfect typing for it. Maybe Lance knew this information all along, and that's why he uses it in his Elite 14. Aerith, bug water type. Armaldo, bug steel type. The Anerith line is also based off of ancient anthropods. Anerith looks like it's based off of a brine shrimp, aka sea monkeys, while Almaldo is based off of Anamocaurus, an extinct genus of radiodonts. Basically, these things were giant sea monkeys, with some of them growing to be up to three feet long. This tells me that Almaldo is probably one of these things. Since they are sea creatures, I feel the water type is its missing type for at least Anerith. For Almaldo, I'm thinking Bug Steel type. The X and Y Pokedex talks about its sturdy armor that can deflect attacks and the sheer power of its pinchers, making me think that the Steel type is a better fit. Pair that with the fact that Almaldo leaves the water to hunt also gives weight to this theory as well. Leip and Crowdily, Grass Water. This one is pretty easy. The Lilip line are based off of sea lilies. While these things are still around today, it's a pretty common fossil to be found. 
This is further backed up by the fact that Lilip and Credilli are found in the Water 3 A group, being the only grass types to have this honor. These details give them the water typing. Fun fact, this type combo will still only give the Lilip line three weaknesses, so it's still pretty defensive type-wise, being rock grass or water grass. Craniodos and Rampaldos, fighting type. Okay, I'll be a little honest, this line is pretty tough. Craniodos and Rampardos have the honor of being the only fossils to be pure rock type, which makes finding its real type a little hard. It is based off of, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, Pachycephalosaurus, or those dinosaurs that have the helmets. It is suggested that these dinosaurs would headbutt each other, kind of like mountain goats, while fighting for territory, for mates, or to fight off predators. With this information discussed, I'm thinking of getting the Craniodos line, the pure fighting type, albeit they are one of the weirder looking fighting types. Shieldon and Basilodon, steel types. I feel as if these two are pretty self-explanatory. I mean, come on, look at these things. It has a steel wall for its face. Steel type is the only type that really fits with these two. With its fossil being named Armor Fossil, the fact it's based off of Chasmosaurus, the ones with a big crest on his face, protecting their neck, and the steel-like tusk found on this Pokemon, this is a no-brainer. Given the fact that Craniodos is a single type and are both from the same game, I feel as if it's understandable but that both Shieldon and Bastodon also have a single type. Tortuga and Caracosta, Water Dark Type. The Tortuga line was most likely inspired by Archleon, the largest known species of sea turtles. We can't get too much information on the typing from this though, so we had to look at the Pokedex for some clues. All the entries talking about the power of its jaws and the fact that it can eat Pokemon, shell or bones or and all, and have no problem eating Omnonite. With this power and overall look, I'd say this line is probably a water dark type. This might be the weakest of them all, but you know, sometimes you just have to roll with this. It sucks. Arkins and Archeops, normal flying type. These guys are pretty easy to pinpoint. They're based off of Archaeodrix, those raptor looking dinosaurs that have wings and feathers. They're considered the link between modern day birds and dinosaurs. The Arkin line is called first bird Pokemon in the Pokedex, and Archaeodrix are the early birds. Arkins and Archaeops are clearly the first normal flying type Pokemon, fitting for such a lame Pokemon. Tyrant and Tyrantrum, fire dragon type. The Tyrant line are based off of Tyrannosaurus rex, also known as T-Rexes, who are also called the King of the Dinosaurs. This title makes a lot of sense given its name, nature, and design. Tyrant and Tyrantrum throws fits when things don't go their way. So given their heat and nature, I feel the fire type is his missing type. Also, I feel as if the king-like design and look to it kind of complement that type pretty well. Dark type could also seem to be a possibility as well, and with it, it could be the first regional form, using the Ultra Sun's Pokedex entry as a source. Amura and Aurorus, Ice Fairy type. I'll be honest, this typing has nothing to do with Amargosaurus, the dinosaur that the Amora line are based off of. I'm saying the missing type is Fairy type, purely based off of the design and as a counter to the Tyrant line. Aurorus' design looks like a queen, maybe even the queen to Tyrantrum's kingship. With the fire typing, both have a type that counters each other. Fire beats ice, while fairy beats dragon. Both the king and queen are needed for a kingdom, and both play well off each other, so I feel this works in this case. This also works well with X and Y games, being based off of France, a country that used to be ruled by monarchies. Fossilized Bird Flying Electric, Fossilized Dino, Ice Water, Fossilized Drake, Dragon Ground, Fossilized Fish, Water Rock. With Generation 8's fossils, it's a little bit different. It's not a reference to a particular animal, but it's more of a practice that people used to do. These poor creatures are a reference to early paleontologist practices where they didn't really know what they were doing and put multiple different fossils together 
to create creatures. Generation 8's Pokédex then was put in to try and justify why they look the way they do. While they are the first fossils to not have the rock type, I will try my best to try to figure out what each original fossil type was. Fossilized Bird was the Flying Electric. Both Dragovolt and Archivolt are part of the electrics, are part electrics, and the fossil's text says it's the Pokemon that soared hop through the air. Fossilized Dino was most likely an ice water type. Using Archerzolt and Archovish, you could tell this was an ice type Pokemon. Pair that with the fact that the fossil says it swam in the oat in the sea, it's most likely also a water type. Fossilized Drake was a dragon ground type. I had to take a bit of a stab in the dark here. Dragazolt and Dragavish share the dragon type, but the fossil states it roamed the land. Since I used that text for the other two, I'm going to do the same and give it the ground type because of that. Finally, Fossilized Fish is a water rock type. Dracovish and Archivish both have the water type, plus given the name of the fossil, it makes sense it would be a water. Why I'm saying rock is that both of them kind of look like Rillicath, a Pokemon referred to as a living fossil that isn't found in Galar region. Rillicath must have lived in the region a while ago, but moved off due to changes in the water, but not before some of them dying off and then becoming fossilized. And that's all of them. What, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Did I nail it or do you have other theories? Please let me know, this could be fun discussion time. But thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, if you did, please press that like button, it truly does help. And I will see you next time. Peace.